Hey everybody, my name is Jake Gordon. I am a cloud ops advocate at Microsoft. That means I am part of the developer relations team here in North America. And today I want to talk to you about something that I started with last time. I'm listening to a little Slayer. Let me turn it down. So what did we talk about last time? Well, last time I talked to you about how to get started building a Cosmos DB database. Um, and it was really simple, it was point, click, get started. This time, I wanna show you a little bit more about the advanced features to get you really um, building databases that are going to be available across the planet. And uh, that includes reads and writes. Uh, so first of all, I wanna show you how we can get started with that by actually taking a look at the data that I added. So there's a couple ways we can review our data. Uh, we can go here, as we can see, you can see the collections. Um, we can look at uh, collections and browse here and click zips, which is the collection name for the database that we're at. Uh, and we can view the information. Uh, let's go ahead. And I believe what we can do is just go to Data Explorer right there. And we can start looking at zips. And we can see all the different parts of the actual collection of the database. We can see that there's stuff for stored procedures if we we're using SQL. We have scale and settings so we can actually upgrade um, the, uh, the amount of throughput that we're having. And that's told to do with RUs. And if you have information that you want to learn about RUs, uh, there's a plenty of docs that are available for that. I'm going to make sure that it's available for you in the links that I provide after. Um, but we're going to be looking at documents because this is what we're going to be replicating. And as you can see, these documents have IDs with information about states, population, uh, location. Uh, if we wanted to, we can add an index. Uh, no big deal. And if we wanted to add that index, it'd be really easy to do. Uh, we could just log right into the shell. If you want to do that, you can go to Quick Start. And you can see there's all these different ways of connecting to the MongoDB API. In this case, you know, I don't need to use Node.js, but I want to use the Mongo shell. So I'm just going to grab this part. And then what I'll do is I'll just type Mongo. Um, I don't need the Mongo.exe because obviously uh, I'm using a Mac. I'm not using Windows. So host, and let's log in. And don't worry about that password because I can rotate these passwords easily. So I'm not going to let you hack into my database. Don't worry about that. Uh, so let's see uh, show databases. Test, just like we had here. If we go back to our overview um, and show collections, zips. So then we can go DB. Um, zips find and we can make it pretty there we go and we can keep looking through this if we wanted to uh, if we wanted to we could add indexes whatever we needed to to add uh, more Right, there you go, yeah. Uh, add more speed to our database. So um, let's talk about what we're gonna do next. So let's look at, first of all, the consistency levels. So one of the great things about Cosmos DB is that you're able to modify all the consistency levels to ensure that, um, you know, session consistency or, or bound, it provides you with how data will become eventually consistent um, for your actual replication that you're going to be doing. Um, so how everything is going to be uh, made consistent. So there's a couple of different uh, consistency models that you can use. You can use strong. And what I really like is the fact that you'll see that it's going to show you how all the rights are going to be done at the same time. You can do bound and stateless. So you can see how they are eventually caught up. Session. Consistent prefix and then eventual consistency. So we're gonna stick with the default, which is session. And the next thing we're gonna look at is going to be our replicate data globally. So this is one of the great parts about Cosmos DB. The fact that you can go ahead and add additional regions where all these data centers exist for Cosmos and make it so that your data is um, available to be read read and written in other uh, regions. Uh, so let's say that I want to add additional uh, availability to North Europe and to West India, 
also South Asia, Southeast Asia, and maybe say Australia, Southeast. So now I don't actually have to go in and create new Cosmos DB servers. I don't need to go ahead and configure any changes to my connection stream because it's all gonna be under one. You'll see, so all we have to do right here is click save. And it's gonna go ahead and start adding the additional regions uh, so that we can have our data available to us all across the planet. And as you can see, we have all of our regions, reads enabled, writes enabled. If we want to, we can modify that again by just unclicking them after the actual uh, update is finished. So that really makes it simple for you to make sure that your data can be written to, read anywhere in the world. So um, we've gone ahead and we've really made it simpler to start building very, very well distributed data uh, across the internet without necessarily needing to do a ton of manual work. And that's really why I recommend instead of setting up a database on a uh, VM on your own, uh, consider using a managed service like Azure Cosmos DB for your MongoDB data. Uh, you'll find that your documents will be uh, well distributed and you'll also see all these other services that you won't have to do on your own. Uh, so consistency, uh, you can get your connection stream really easy so you can log in. Uh, you can make uh, modifications to the firewall and the virtual network to allow different networks in when you want. Um, and there's plenty of other things such as metrics and monitoring to find out how your data is doing. So um, don't make it harder for yourself make it easy and let's get started by using cosmos uh, to build our databases with and as you can see we've got some locations already started to be ready for uh, use and we won't have to add an additional connection stream because our uri will stay the same this is one for every single instance that's going to be part of our new uh, replica uh, replicated data globally you can actually see it says here please use port 10.255 to utilize uh, the geo availability. So stop waiting, start using it. Give it a try. Uh, if you need any uh, help, uh, you know that we've got an amazing uh, network of people. We've got TechNet, we've got all the developer advocates, and uh, you can always reach out to some of us on Twitter. Uh, I'm at jdestro. So we'll see you next time. Keep trying out uh, all these different features for uh, Cosmos and, and learn about how great your data can be um, with uh, using Azure. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.